Health Focus is brought to you by National Medical Stores, NMS. Passionate about your life. There is no doubt that every human being has a time they will die. However, the uncertainty on when that time comes is what many of us never want to think about. But what if you knew your timeline? I mean, the day you will likely breathe your last. Is that something you want to think about? Well, Dr. Deus Dedit Birunji has for more than a decade been living with his mind tuned to a time he will breathe his last. This is because of an uncommon genetic disorder that affects males majorly, muscular dystrophy. I can say it's been around three, four years when I'm not able to actually perform uh, duties expected of a doctor at a general level like I am. So muscles are those parts of the body, uh, they can be, you can say skeletal muscle. Skeletal muscle are muscles of the body that enable you make movement, enable you move from one point to another, uh, enable you raise your arm or move your leg, those are muscles. So they are attached to the bones and uh, your movement system is, is done by muscles. Sometimes dystrophin is absent or it is malfunctional or it's not performing the way it's supposed to be. So this can come from, uh, like in Duchenne muscle dystrophy, uh, the, the dystrophy is completely absent. So if you have muscles that are contracting, that are doing those movements, and that stabilizing structure is absent, it means that the muscles are going to keep slowly dying out. Uh, the muscles die out, and what happens is that that muscle is replaced by fat tissue, so or scar tissue, you can call it scar tissue or uh, fat tissue. Now that tissue cannot contract, cannot perform like the muscle. So you may look at someone, they actually look like they are big, but actually in the real sense they do not have muscles. The hereditary condition manifests in the progressive weakening and wasting of the muscles. They may have walking difficulties in the beginning, they are walking but you see they are not walking like the other children. Uh, the onset of age usually maybe three years, five years, depends, sometimes six years. That's when the first symptoms start to present themselves. Now they lose, uh, pro they first lose proximal muscles. So proximal muscles, those are muscles of the back, the stomach, those are the ones that become weak. So someone, you find a child is trying to get maybe from the ground up, they will try to crawl on themselves. Maybe they use their arms. Uh, to hold on to their feet and legs so they can stand if let's say they are in a sitting position or they are on the ground. Now as the progression happens or in increases, uh, with, with some time they will even fail to lift themselves from the ground, uh, crawling on themselves and then they will want to maybe use some structures or let's say they, they will need a chair or they will need uh, a wall so that they can crawl on it so they are able to reach the standing position. And then that progression will keep uh, increasing and worsening, then they can no longer maybe even stand. Uh, they are not able to stand by themselves. Uh, they will need walking aids. They may, may need a wheelchair at some point. And that progression keeps going on. And then it can also cause the respiratory muscles to fail. Muscles of the chest, uh, the heart to malfunction, uh, sometimes they may not be able to, they can complain of morning headaches because maybe in the night they are not able to breathe well. He considers himself lucky to have completed medical school and actually be able to share his story. But all this was driven by his childhood challenges. Most of the time I would go to hospital and of course I would explain myself, my symptoms, but they usually said maybe it could be polio, maybe it is something. But I always felt it's just the effort. I do not have the power to maybe move or climb stairs or it's, it, I'm struggling with that. And so when, every time I would explain myself, it would not come out, they would not pick it like that. So there's also on another end, um, maybe if we come out, we can improve care or also uh, educate, uh, educate our healthcare providers about some of these illnesses. And so they can be able to, to help uh, in treatment. Dr. Birunji says he's is the mild type of the illness. Uh, with Duchenne muscle dystrophy, the weakness progresses very fast. 
uh, in that most of the time, on average, um, they start uh, having walking difficulties and then uh, they get, they fail to walk or help themselves. And by the time they are probably 20 or 21, most of them are dead. That progressive weakness can also affect the diaphragm. Uh, on top of affecting the other muscles, can also affect the heart. So sometimes you find that their hearts become enlarged. And as they enlarge, they cannot perform as they are supposed to be. So uh, those are the most common causes of death. Um, when you look at Becker, uh, the progression is a bit slower. Whereas it seems rare, Dr. Birunji says it requires more attention to help the sick live improved lives. Muscle dystrophies, the way they do, uh, it is important that one parent know about them. Uh, if you see your child doing certain uh, ways, uh, you get to maybe know how you can help them. It's basically uh, functional support. There is not cure that you're going to have that is going to treat uh, this patient. However, when they start developing maybe heart problems, then you can put them on heart medicines so that you can prolong their function to some level. Globally, muscular dystrophy has a prevalence rate of 7.1%. Walter CJ, NTV. <laughs>